Today's High Performance Podcast is brought to you by Josh Fegan Digital. It's the only place to track and keep yourself accountable by looking at all of the essential numbers from buyer appointments, market appraisals and listing appointments to listings, sales and income and working in 45-minute sessions. You'll find it all on Josh Fegan Digital. Welcome to High Performance, the podcast featuring Josh Fegan and Alexander Phillips. Alexander, I've really noticed with a lot of people that you can do a lot with dialogue mastery, and that's about knowing how you open up a call, how you end a call, how you close for an appointment. How you just make sure that you're really confident to be able to keep a conversation flowing and learning to listen to the client before you actually go to respond with some preset dialogue you might already have. Alex, you know, what did it take to become great at dialogue? What have you learned over time that's really worked for you? And what are some things that some people can do quite quickly to actually get better at it? Josh, I think the first thing is to listen. Listen to what the person uh, is saying, listen to their body language, listen to their tone, work out is this which way you need to take the call. Like uh, I think you, you know, part of I think what a good agent can do is, is, is a mastery of actually even over the phone, not face-to-face, is feeling out which way it's going to go and how to either get it back on track or close it out. Um, and there's certain questions you ask. You know, the best thing I you've got to start with, and I'm pretty short and sharp, probably could, you know, make it a bit longer, is, you know, a bit of rapport building, you know, not not just launching straight into it and actually understanding if that person is in the right mind frame as well mm-hmm. to talk to you. And mm-hmm. uh, you can tell, like, they're screaming kids in the background or mm-hmm. you can you can hear them there on the train going to work. Like, you, like stuff like that, I pick up and go, okay, we're not going to get a good, we're not going to get a good outcome here. Let's, mm-hmm. you know, touch base later on. So I think when you listen, ask the right questions, um, the dialogue, because they're talking, you can then actually think about what you're saying and being on the fly and then trying to, you know, catch you out or you say the wrong thing. Mm-hmm. I think the big thing I've noticed is that your ability to really stay in the moment makes a big difference. When you're there at Open for Inspections, you've got some great dialogue and some great questions that you ask people. But I know that you're always trying to work with each buyer and to make them feel really special about where they're at and ultimately about that particular property. Is that an innate skill to actually care and, and to talk more to them than actually talking about the property and maybe the timber architraves that are in the property? That person you might be talking to could be the next door neighbour that, that they don't really care. You know, they've seen the property get built. They're, they're not, it's just, they're there to do a walkthrough. You know, you might be, build a bit of rapport with them. So when you, you know, you go to appraise their place, they remember you. But yeah, I think it's about understanding firstly, why is that buyer there or that person, I should say, and then steering the conversation that way. You know, and understanding, are they looking at other properties today? What bought them here? They're ready to buy before Christmas. They want to buy after Christmas where they want to settle. You know, if we, if we had an offer on the table, should we give you a call? You know, like it's about – because you can waste a whole conversation with someone, an absolute waste of five minutes, and then then you've worked out why that person's there. Work it out up front. Alex, one of the great things that you're really good at is about being able to close your appointments. Lots of people don't know how to actually ask the appointment. I know it sounds funny, but you could be on a call with someone and, and actually just not ask at the end. What do you do to know A, know that they're ready for an appointment and B, to actually book that appointment when you're on the phone? The understanding their urgency, you know, and also you might even just kick that appointment down the street till next year or when they're ready. Uh, making sure, you know, that, that they actually, you know, it's not just like a quick in and out. They're, they're, you know, everyone that's making the decision there is is present in the meeting. Making sure that uh, you're controlling what's going to, the outcome of that meeting as well. I think the big conversation that you've always learned is about like listening to people on the phone. When you listen to others in the office and particularly when people first start, what do you do to coach them to get them faster, better, you know, more in tune with clients when they're on the phone? Being direct, Mm -hmm. you know, and asking the right questions, when to ask the questions, but really understanding what you're there to, to offer. And, you know, this the interesting thing is that when you listen to people, how important is um, is their tonality, the speed at which they're speaking, you know, how they're actually talking and sounding on that phone? You know, one of the most important things you can pick up because you can, you know, you can, might just talk as fast as them and you're speeding up the whole conversation or pulling it back to take control of it. There's so many different factors, but definitely the, you know, the the, the, the tonality and, and you know, the behaviours of someone on the phone, which is something that experience gives you, you, you can work out, you know, quite quite easily on how sort of serious they are, as, you know, if they're a buyer or seller, whatever it might be. How does Alexander Phillips leave a voicemail? I, I leave long-winded voicemails, like a just sold call, what, you know, what it's sold for, a bit of a forecast. So if you want to know what we're forecasting for next year, give me a call. But we actually leave, we don't do the Josh Vegan approach where it's Josh Vegan, give me a call or whatever you do. Yeah. We actually 
just give them everything on the voicemail. And and what you know, like, you're like the, that credit the, over time. Yeah, right? the best voicemail yeah. you can leave a buyer if they're looking at a house, which is also a way of telling the vendors that they're in or out is hi it's Alex Phillips. We've had a few developments on Six Prospect Street, give me a call. And if you don't hear back from them, they're they out straight away. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, a few developments. What could that mean? We're selling it. We've got an offer. Yeah, there's you a know, change in price. And they call back in 30 it. seconds. You've got the buyer. And that's an important part. Like, learn how to actually um, find out what works for you and mm. go with it.